Hey guys, welcome back to some more Sonic Heroes. I hope you like grinding, because that's what Rail Canyon's all about. Oh yeah, it's that one level from SA2. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Hold B, don't tap it. Um, um. Also, grinding's optional, just fly. Keep your eyes on the rails. How, you, screw that. I'm just going to fly off him. Keep your eyes on the rails, he says as Sonic is in the air. <laughs> you missed that key. Well, I guess in stage one you don't need Yeah, it. I'm not going for extra lives. I already have more than enough lives at this point. I guess he could say that they're really just, you know, leading you on a judge the linear path at this point. Yeah, you can say this whole game is on rails. It's on rails, yeah. No, that's what I was trying. I couldn't think of them. Failed on the pun. You failed as a... You failed as human being. Yes. Yeah. That means you're not allowed to make any more puns in. Ever. Oh, you know that's something ever happened. No! You failed, so you're doomed. No. Don't let those trains hit you. I mean, that actually is an easy section to get hit by a train because they move pretty quick. I was able to outrun the train, luckily, but most of the time in that section, I get rear-ended by the train. So, I kind of got lucky there. So you could say it's a train wreck of a run. <laughs> and this conversation really going off the rails. Let's get back on him. Now, I always remember... In this game, do they give you points if you go through the rainbow? Yeah, they do. So you get a thousand points with the lead character and eight hundred for every additional character that's behind you going through the rings. And if all three of your characters go through, you also get a bonus item. Okay. So if you want that kind of outcome, use the power character, punch to get the characters all in one group, and then jump through the ring. You're guaranteed to basically get the full points and the item at that point. Also, who needs a level where a flight character we can just jump down and hit the rail? <laughs> it's like, screw that, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not gonna play the game normally. Well, who do you think I, who, who do you think I am? Give me options, I take options. Leave them to me, Sonic. Who do you think I am, a casual? I'm a Sonic fan. I play this game lots of times. You know how I told you, Amber, about how Sonic games just experiment a lot with their game? Mm -hmm. I mean, not as much recently. I think Sonic's gotten to a point now where they're comfortable with where they're at, so they're kind of taking the Mario route and, and just, you know, making it just easy because they know boost works. But during this time period, the Sonic franchise experimented with a lot of freaking game design. Uh-huh. Well, the best example is actually Sonic Adventure 1 in particular, because it had six different gameplay styles. It was very different for its time. And then this game got a record around the time it came out for having the most playable characters in a platformer, because you were able to play as 12 separate characters, technically. Yeah. Even though, you know, half of them controlled the same. All the speed characters played the same, all the flights the same, all the power the same. It's just, they were technically different, so they got a record for it. Huh. But yeah, like, you know, SA2 had three different types of gameplay styles you played. This game, you know, has this mechanic where you have, you control things at once. Shadow introduced guns and alternate paths and all that other stuff. And cursing. And cursing, which is weird for a Sonic game. It was weird hearing hearing Sonic say, say hell. Yeah. In that game. It was really weird. I mean... Sega was in a weird state at this point. They were they were literally throwing anything at the wall and seeing if it stuck. Yeah, like, it was kind of weird how the Sonic series kind of went through this experimental phase throughout like the early 2000s in general, but this is pretty much all they were putting out for a while, which is Sonic games. 
So they kept on changing the gameplay style because they kept on wanting to get new fans into the series so they can actually get more money off their sales because they know that Sonic just wasn't for everyone. But at the same time, that's all we got. So what it do? Yeah. Um, Sonic 06 kind of played it safe. It went back to kind of adventure formula. But, like, Unleashed did the boost formula and realized, oh, everybody likes that. So they just used it from now on. I mean, Lost World was another game that kind of experimented with its gameplay, but I mean, it kind of... Unfortunately, a lot of people don't like Lost World. Yeah. I, for one, think Lost World is really fine, but, you know, I know a lot of people just like, oh, I want to go back to Boost, so the second one back to Boost forces. Yep. Now, granted, that kind of hit them in the butt a little bit, but... Well, because they advertised that as, like, from the creators of Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations. Like, they pushed for mentioning, hey, this is basically another one of these games again. But it was very different in comparison. It was very short. The controls were nearly as fine. You didn't have nearly as much options for just doing anything as both the Sonic types. The biggest draw of that was just playing as the custom character. That was the best part about the Forces. Honestly, it was the best part of Forces. And even... Even, you know, playing as the Sonic levels in Forces wasn't bad at all. I The only complaint I have with it is it was too short. That yeah. was it. Yeah, also the controls are just weird in general. Like, you would hold up on the joystick and he wouldn't run in a straight line. He'd just kind of zip all around the place. It was very loose. Yeah. But, you know... But in recent years, what my point is, Sonic... Is really kind of just stick, stuck with one game st play style. I think Sega finally realized this is kind of how a lot of people like playing the modern Sonic this game. Is what this is what works. Let's not break it. Yeah. You know? Lester, are you bored? I was actually doing that to go faster. If you swap between the speed and the power character, you kind of reset your speed. So if you're going through a slow section like I was going through there, it is technically faster to swap characters. Okay. I was like, are you bored, Lester? I, I do that a lot on rails, because if I'm going slow with one of the characters, swap between two of them, and I just get the speed right back. Yeah, like I said, Sonic, during the mid-2000s, <laughs> it was kind of a weird time. Yep. Because they didn't even know what they wanted. They don't... The fans didn't know what they wanted, and the developers just absolutely did not know what, what, what worked. Yeah, it was it was a very weird time for him once they made the jump off Dreamcast. They didn't really have anything else for a while. Whoa, what what happened there? That yeah, like I jumped over a trigger to show that the bridge is being formed on a curve, but the bridge is always there, just the graphic isn't. So if you skip the, the switch for the graphic to show up, it doesn't matter because the bridge is still solid, just invisible. This is a graphical bug. That's weird. Yeah. I don't think they thought of players jumping over the switch to activate the bridge. I like how Tails said, look at all those Eggman's robots, but you literally just zoomed past them with yeah. the car. Look at all those robots go by quick. Alright, so here you're supposed to activate three switches for all three of the teammates, but uh, we got no time for that. There's a door in my way, but I say, what's a door? Clip. Yep. <laughs> even even Sonic was a me that. He goes, yeah, whatever he did it. Yeah, that was a perfect timing for the score taunt. Also got really worried there because Knuckles was hanging around one of those grabber enemies. And I was thinking, oh, is he going to just get grabbed at the very end of this level? Because that would suck. That can't happen. Uh, Lightspeed Dash, can you work, please? Thank you. I lost a thousand points for that. I only got the 800. Oh. That don't matter. I got more than enough points for getting the high score here. A for awesome. Could also be A for awful. This is true. Because you didn't do that light speed dash right, so therefore you lost a couple seconds. Yeah, light speed dash in this game is weird. Honestly, I think the best game that had light speed dash is still probably Shadow of the Hedgehog. Because Adventure 2 had it mapped for the same button as Battle Spray Slip with Sonic, so half the time you just bounce to a pit and die. Heroes, it's also mapped to the same button as the Rock Excel. That's the time you kick the rings and don't get them. Right. So that should do the light speed attack 
easily here, or lightspeed dash, sorry, in this game easily, jump, and then activate it. Because then you won't really do anything. Sometimes it may do the tornado move by accident, but it's more consistent than doing it on the ground. Shadow had it so that it was mapped to a separate button, and that the rings would stay collected, but the ring trail would still exist if you needed to use a lightspeed dash there again. It is by far the best in the whole series. Sega, Sega had this mentality with Sonic that everything can work on one button. That's it. Yep. And it costs a lot of problems. They wanted to keep it simplistic like the Genesis games, so these games were easy to pick up and understand, but it came in a downside. Part of me thinks that Eggman with this boss just literally took the egg hawk after it blew up and just, you know, just said, okay, I'm going to attach a blimp to it. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much all this boss is because once we get back to the hawk, it has barely any health. So it's like he didn't have much time to really fix it up between the fights. Like, oh God, I need a new robot to fight. All right, egg hawk on a blimp, go. Like, look at this. Two power dunks and it's already dead. Oh my <laughs> the thing has no health. <laughs> I already fixed this one, Sonic. It's your turn. What they intend for you to do in this fight is they want you to go around this whole area. There's a bunch of rails that you're supposed to grind on and you're supposed to attack them from a distance. I recommend do what I just did there instead and go back and forth to bait him to stay in that beginning area because it's so much easier to focus on attacking him compared to doing that over a bombless pit. Yeah. You can get levels going further into the level, but it's not really needed. As you see, just spam the power character's punches, and you can just breeze through his health. Yes, Tails, that was a fake Eggman. Look how perfectly round that head is. Oh, I didn't know. I thought the real Eggman has spring for a neck. Now, if you didn't know who that was, I'm sorry. Yeah, like me as a kid, like, uh, hi, shiny Sonic thing. What are you? 